All right, the next task for me for this OBS, I'll be installing this roll pan. I did the SS wing. If you want to see how I done it, I have it popping up, and I also put it down in the description. But our first step would be removing this bumper. Might as well remove the tailgate and get it out the way in the tail lights. But let me take care of that by removing this bumper. Then I'll cut you back on. We'll move on. Tailgate off. I also started removing some of the bolts and nuts for the bumper to hold the bumper on. But you also got to remove this quick disconnect just for the tag lights. But let me show you some of the bolts here. You want to have two right here and one right here on both sides. You got to remove. I done got these two on both sides off. They 18 millimeters. And let me take this one off. Then I got one more on the other side and the bumper should come down. It was actually more bolts than what I thought it was. I got the bumper off. But I couldn't get this bracket off here with the bumper still being attached. So I had to take the e-bolts here off that was in the side of it. It connects up in here. I don't know if you can see it. And also, it was a boat all the way back here. It's a 15 millimeter. So I had to take that off just to get the bracket off. So let me take this one off, then I'll be good to go. Both brackets off. I also went on to put the bolts and nuts back in them just to keep them so I won't lose them. We're also going to have to remove this spare tire because it's going to be in the way. It's going to keep the roll pan from sitting flush. And you can get the tool. It should be in the truck somewhere. But I'm just using this screwdriver to drop it. Just got the roll pan just sitting up there for a mock-up. I got one self tapping screw right here. Just trying to mock everything up before I start making my move. I was trying to line it up. It's kind of sitting down too far at the bottom, but I ain't gonna worry about that because I could put some body fill on there, fiberglass, and flush that on that. But I want this top up here somewhat even. This side here pretty even this side over here it's not so I'm gonna have to bring it down some it's a bigger gap over here also but I'm just trying to plan everything out first I guess I'll go ahead and grind all my arrows that I'm gonna weld down the bare metal like here and here on both pieces also around these screw holes I'm gonna weld, weld them to the actual bed of the truck. So let me clean them areas there up, then I'll cut you back on. I'll be using to grind everything down. It's gonna be a flap disc. This is a 60 grit flap disc, but you can use that's a 60. You can use 120 to the grind the paint off real easy. I'm gonna get it all up in here. I'm gonna clean it. I'm gonna start it on this side. Let me show you. I got that clean. I'm just hitting it like this here. See, it's down the bare metal now. 
There's I'm a wheel. Also did here. I just got to do the bite of the tailgate. I had to put it back on so I could mark out where I need to grind down the bare metal. I'm going to take the roll pan back off and I'm going to grind this down. Then I think I'll be good to start welding. Let me cut this weld off. I got my Harbor Freight welder. I don't do too much welding because I'm not a welder, so I don't claim to be down. But I know how to grind. I know how to grind down and do some body work, though. I done started welding this side here. We're attempting to weld. I know it look ugly, but I'm going to grind all that down and shape it on up. I was using my jack to hold it up in place until I tack it. But it's on there, though. I still got to plug these holes. Also do this side over here. I got a bigger gap on this side, but I'll take care of it. All right, I done grinded this down. Knocked the wheels down some. Also up in here. And this side. Also. I'm going to get some fiberglass filler. Bundle glass, you don't have to go to this step here, you can just go straight to filler by the filler. But I'm gonna go with bundle glass, fiberglass filler because it's waterproof. I'm just gonna wipe some up in here first. I'm also, gonna I decided to go ahead and fiberglass this up here. You could use seam filler, but I'm a fiberglass it, make it one piece. So let me take care of that, then I'll cut you back on. Let me get you caught up on what I'm doing. I got my fiberglass filler on this top part, also right here. It's still kind of soft, I'm going to start sanding on it in a minute before it get too hard. I had to build up this area here because it was a lot lower than this. But I flesh it on out once I put the body fill on it. And I'm just gonna sand it with some 80 grit. I'm gonna knock it down. I'm gonna knock this area down, flesh it on out so I can put my fiberglass mat on it. I'm just gonna use some 80 grit. Fiberglass fill it down. Now I'm gonna lay some fiberglass mat. I got some cut out how much I need. I'm just using bundle fiberglass mat. Now I gotta mix up some resin. And I'm gonna use a chip brush to brush it on to put my fiberglass mat on. I'm just gonna put it from, I'm gonna have it like overlapping this top here. Like that. Just to bind these pieces together. Glass mat down on this top part. I had to put some masking tape because it kept lifting up on me. It wasn't that big of a lip and it wouldn't lay down. So I had to put some tape up there until it dry up. Once it dry, I pulled the tape up and started sanding everything. I'm gonna let it sit out here overnight in the booth and come back out here in the morning and start sanding on it. I sand this and also sand that. I put some tape down here too to keep that resin from dripping on it. Because that resin is kind of hard to get up once it dry. So I tried to keep it off this part here. Which I'm going to sand it anyway, but I just wanted to keep that resin off of it. It's the following morning. Five glass resin and dry it. I'm gonna take some 80 grit on the DA and knock all this down. Also gonna knock this down. 
Once I get it somewhat smooth, I'll take a block and hit it some more. All right, let's get caught up. I sent this five glass mat down here. Had a few uh, boards here. So I just took a razor blade and opened them up so I can get some filler inside of it. Because you don't want to have a big void and filler sitting on top of it. And here I sanded it down. I'm going to wipe some old five glass filler right here. Try to bevel this off to the original trunk. And I'm going to put some up here before I put some just regular body filler on it. Because that fiberglass filler is a lot stronger than regular body filler. So these little areas here where I got to put more, I'm just going to put some fiberglass filler in. And I feel good to go for, for just regular body filler. I'm just going to put this Evercoat body filler here. I'm going to put that up here. And on the spots that's kind of large, I'm going to put this bundle glass, fiberglass filler. Like here, I got to build this up some more. But I think that's about it. I had forgot to mention this here. I might have said it in an earlier clip. Like where this roll pan metal in in the original bed. Where it meet up at. You could have put some seam filler on that seam. That's for to keep the water from getting in between the two metals and just sitting and resting out. I could have done it that way. It would have been a lot quicker. But I think this way here, it looks a lot better. And plus it strengthened up the two metals together. So that's actually two reasons why I've done it like this. To keep the water from going in between the metals and resting out and just sitting. Because this fiberglass is waterproof. Just wanted to let you know why I done it this way. I don't mind shaping all this up because seam cellar would have been a lot quicker. Just wipe some seam cellar on and be done. But I think it look a lot better and cleaner like this here. It might not look good now, but once I finish it up, it's going to look real good. I got everything wiped on, everything done dried up. Now I'm ready to take some 80 grit and start sanding. Getting everything smooth. Then I might be ready for some prime after that if I don't find no more imperfections. Which I'm pretty sure I'll find some, but I'll just put some glaze and put it. Let me find it. I'll just put some glaze and put it on those spots if I find some. So let me take care of all this sand and then I'll put you back on. I got that taken care of. Now I can see all my imperfections that I need to fill with this amazing putty here. It's spot putty. It's two part. It's basically these dark areas here. See if I can get a good view. Like right here, them low areas. It's low. It's low there. And I got some imperfections here. Pinholes. So I'm just going to wipe a light coat with a skim coat on those areas there. I'm going to wipe a skim coat on all this here, further that out. So let me take care of that. Lightweight glaze and put it down. 
once this dry up here, I'll come back out here and hit this with 180. Knock it on down. Well, this part here already dry. I'll knock it down. But right here, I'll probably hit this with 80. Just to cut it. Because 80 cut a lot faster than 180. Then I'll go back on top of the 80 scratches with 180 to get them 80 scratches out. Like this here, I just shape it up with 80. Believe I'm ready for some high bill primer now. Everything sanded it up good. I also went around my old paint with a maroon scotch bright. This is just in case I get some overspray on that area. It'll have something to bond to. It just won't be laying on top of it. I'm just going to hit the areas that I repaired first. Like this area here. And up in here. It's the following morning here. Everything done dried up. I'm good to go ahead and start sanding it. I already see an imperfection. I got to fill with some glazing putty. Little pinholes. Imperfection now. I probably can get a lot of it out when I start sanding, doing the blocking up in here. But I'm going to wipe some glaze and put on it first, then I'll start sanding it. I'm just going to use the one part. I don't know. I got it somewhere over here. Can't find it. But I'm also, I will be removing this Chevrolet sand. I'm going to take this off and I'm probably going to have to sand it. Once I get it up. So let me get started on that. I'm going to start, I'm going to put some glaze and put on this. Then while it's drying, I can be taking this off. This thing became a job. I done tried everything trying to get this up. I tried a putter knife first. That wasn't working. I tried fishing line. That wasn't working. I tried heat. That didn't work. So I just grabbed my little saw here. This working the best. I also done found moisture it was sitting up under here it ain't rusted out yet but it was getting there just got to clean it up some of the spots it pulled the uh, paint up so I got to repair that like right here then once I do get this up I'm still gonna have to get all this this right here up but it shouldn't be as hard as this. Let me show you the glazing putty that I used. I just used this glazing putty here. On these spots. It wasn't many spots like on here. Most of them was up here. Which I don't know why I'm doing it. Because I'm going to do a bed liner. And it's going to cover all that. But I just did it just to be doing some. Well, let me finish getting this up, then I'll cut you back on. Finally got it off. You can see it now. That's where I started getting down into the paint. But I'm going to take it outside and sand all this down. I'm going to try to hit this with some Ada, hopefully it come up pretty easy. But I'm going to sand it all down. 
then I repair everything. Here you go before I start repairing everything. I had sanded all this down, cleaned up that rusted metal. You could tell it was getting bad, it started pitting. So, good thing I caught it before it got too bad. Yeah, I finally got all this stuff off. I got a few of these areas here. Just wipe some body filler on them areas that was low. Like right here. I haven't signed this yet. I had signed this. I just gotta go back and hit this with the DA. I'm just knocking it down. But once I get it down, I'm gonna go back and block it and get it smooth. Got a dirt block 180, but before I start blocking it, I'm gonna put a guide coat on it, show all my low areas. I'm just gonna lightly mist it on. Just sprayed it with the gag coat. I'm going to let this sit probably overnight. Then I'll come back in the morning and block this. I done finished with this up on the inside. Let me take it and I'll show you. I done finished sanding all this here. Just got to blow it off, wipe it down, then spray my white sealer. I'd be good to go. Yeah, I'm ready to do some sanding now. I got a 180 grit on my dura block. I'm gonna show you what the guide coat gonna do. It's gonna show me all my low areas once I start blocking it. Already you can see this a low area here. I gotta bring it on down. I want all my primer to be gray like this. I want to get all the guide coat up. See, I about got this here. I got a little bit more to go. But you can also see this part here low and this here low. That's low. I'm just test fitting the tailgate on the truck. My main concern was making sure this clear. Let me move this cardboard. I put this cardboard here just in case it touched. Making sure this clear. Because this side, it was kind of close, but I had, it wasn't touching, but I just wanted to make sure, and I had shaved off some of that with the grinder on both ends, but it's good to go though. I just wanted to make sure before I start putting the final seal on, but everything is looking good. Guess I'm going to blow it off and wipe it down, get ready. I'm going to hang this tailgate back up. Get ready to spray the white seal on everything. Everything good to go. Ready to be shot with the sealer. Got it hung up by two chains. I'm not going to even spray this back side. I'm just going to spray. i probably spray all this and just hit this top. Same way with over here. Let me show you what seal I'm going to use. Here's the seal I'll be using. It's the Eurocam Color Seal 2K Urethane Sealer. And it's white. It mixes 4 to 1 to 1. I got 4 ounces in there now. I got to bring the activator and the reducer up. And I'll be good to go on that. And I'm going to spray it with this Sata Jet 1000B RP. It got a 1.8 tip on it.
been about an hour since I got through spraying. I'm just letting it sit out here. Harden up a little bit. Laid down pretty good. Didn't have no issues at all. Once it's set up, I'll put the tailgate back on and the tail lights make a final video for you. Stop.